Hello friends and welcome to Figure Study, where you're probably wondering who I am and what I've done with Rob because, yet again, I'm looking at something that's actually pretty new, and that is, as you can probably guess, Earthrise Optimus Prime. This guy is a surprisingly big pain in the butt to get a hold of. And in case any of you are curious, um, that Amazon just had him available for a very small window of time a few days ago. Uh, I hate trying to find stuff locally. Anyway, yes, Earthrise Optimus Prime is very good and is basically a mini masterpiece figure. And that's all I gotta say, so bye. No, but there's a little more to it than that. But yeah, this is a this is a very good, very good figure. <laughs> I definitely have my reservations, but it is good. And for once, it's a mainline release, a recent mainline release of an Optimus Prime where he actually comes with a trailer, which I I don't like the Optimus Prime trailer thing. I will admit he looks cool and complete when he's got the full trailer set up. I will admit that. So vehicle mode, yeah, it's fine. Good even. But I don't like the trailer because it has zero purpose for robot mode. Yes, it does things, but like... I just want to put the robot figure on display on a shelf. I don't need the box that it comes with, and that's just gets in the way. But hey, I know there are a lot of people who really want the trailer, so I'm happy for them that they do finally get a trailer to go with a G1 styled Optimus Prime. And as I said, the whole thing together looks good. It looks like quintessential Optimus Prime. The red box up in front, the gray box in back. <laughs> it all works. Now, it does do that weird thing that has been pointed out a few times with regards to the wheels, where uh, the wheels on the trailer, the wheels on the back of the cab, and the wheels on the front of the cab are all different. And I don't know why they did that. I mean, it, I'd be fine with the wheels on the trailer being different than the wheels on the cab, but I am in agreement with MGO and a lot of other people. Put this off to the side for now where, uh, you know, it's just kind of distracting almost how the front wheels are so much different than the back wheels. I'm thinking I might go in and paint this silver on both sides so that at least then it matches a little bit better. But yeah, it's a little bit strange. Anyway, moving right along and looking at the cab itself, this is a G1 Optimus Prime. <laughs> it is super duper G1. It's got all the telltale signs, you know, it's a big red box. It's got the right windows, the right shape, the right colors. Well, arguably the right colors. The colors are kind of here and there all over the place. The thing that's a little bit weird about this, though, is even though Earthrise is meant to be more cartoon Earth mode accurate, from what I understand, it's still got that kind of siege flavor to it, where you've got a ton of molded detail all over the place. I mean, it's nice that it's there, but it kind of looks out of place. At least on something like this. Like, look at the gas cans. Look at how much detail is in the gas cans and the freaking bumper. The bumper does not need to have that much on it. <laughs> I mean, I, I get it. You know, it's more molded detail. It looks nice. It's just, it, it's like the Earth mode, but with the Cybertronian texture on top of it. Like, look at everything going on up here. It's just a little bit weird when you look at it up close. I still think it looks good. It's definitely a good looking truck, but it's just a little bit strange how it's, uh, got so much texture to it. One other thing that kind of is a bummer about this is the light blue and like kind of shiny translucent plasticky stuff that got going on the front here for the lights and the windows is great. But then when you go along to the side and look at the, the side windows here, it's a much duller plastic there. I feel like they could have maybe painted the inside there to make it shine a little bit more, kind of like the uh, you know, the stuff going on here, but it is what it is. Also, those side windows don't look right. The placement and angles and shape are just weird, but it's a small thing. Ultimately, it's fine. Just, uh, you know, I'm just nitpicking. Um, why did I reconnect the trailer? Because we got to talk about the trailer. As I said, I do not like the trailer as an accessory. It gets in the way. I will say, because it's got this little flip out kickstand thing and can stand up on its own, it has come in handy on the shelf just because I can like put it on the back and like put figures on top of it so that they kind of stand up above the figures in front of them a little bit better so you can see them better. But that's really the only use I personally have for it. There is some nice molding here, like a little bit in the front here. There's a lot of nice texture along the side. And of course that telltale 
Optimus stripe with the Autobot logo and whatever this little Cybertronian basketball looking thing is up in the corner. The uh, little block that the wheels sit on is actually nicely textured as well. Around the back, there's this nonsense, which I know it's because it's a functional shield. Well, functional and functional, it's a toy, but I know that this looks like this because it's meant to come off and be a shield in robot mode, but it looks really weird on the back of this truck, because you can see that there's detail here to make the back look kind of like regular truck trailer doors, but there's the split for the doors and then suddenly all this mess. I don't know that there's a better way they could have done it. Maybe they could have just had this be like a regular flat piece and the shield would just be something that pegs on the inside of the trailer or along the bottom. But that's a little bit weird looking when you're really digging into the details. Also, you've got rear lights that are not painted and we'll talk about that in a second. Actually, we'll talk about that now. So yeah, um, I mean, yes, it's the trailer. And like I said, I don't really care about the trailer personally, but there's not a lot going on here paint-wise. The trailer has this detailing on both sides, the silver on the wheels, and that's it. There's no other paint on the trailer. It's just light gray plastic, dark gray plastic, that's it. And that kind of stinks. I'm sure, sure, there's going to be a repro label set made for this in the future because it's a mainline Optimus Prime figure. There's no way there's not going to be a repro label set for it. But out of the box, it's just kind of, ex well, kind of nothing. It's excruciatingly bland. I'm not saying it needed paint on the back or anything like that, but it's just like, even here, this blue is just, it doesn't work with this gray. The shades aren't contrasted enough. Functionally, you can do the Optimus Prime trailer thing, which is open it up and flip down a little ramp, and then you've got this going on. And there is some great detailing on the inside of the trailer here. And I don't even mind the little grid that they've got going down here because it's the bottom of the trailer. Plus, let's be honest, if this is going to be like some kind of repair station or something like that for, uh, you know, other vehicles, then maybe you need some place for the blood to drain. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, Energon to drain. So yeah, it's got nice molded detail, but again, there's no paint at all on the inside. And it's, yes, inside of the trailer. And as I said, not important to me, but I know that this is important to other people and it's just so stark in here. It does stand up. So if you wanted to do the Optimus Prime standing repair thing, you could do that. And uh, it only really works if you stand it up this way because these bits back here are designed to act as like a heel almost. If you try to do it this way, it wants to lean back because there's a bunch of weight up here and there's nothing down here to really keep it from moving. So you kind of have to do it this way. Unless you start playing around with the uh, with the angles of the, uh, of the sides here. And moving into this little bit here, we've got the kind of drone thing that has like little ball jointed arms and the little rotatey flippy thing and you can see that there is a molded almost like a molded cockpit there sort of like the original toy or the original masterpiece whatever you want to call it it's cute the problem i have with it is that it's you know either dark gray or light gray plastic there is no paint anywhere so it's just really kind of bland looking but it serves a purpose i guess and if you wanted to grab like a other Earthrise or even Siege vehicle and have it parked there. You could have the uh, you know, little drone like working on it. Maybe give the little drone a wrench, which doesn't really hold super well. <laughs> Make it look like it's working on it. Yeah, this this is not that's that does not work too well. Not sure why they did it that way. I feel like they could have made these claws, you know, able to hold five millimeter stuff, but whatever. Does it plug in? Yeah, the little, the little face hole things are five millimeters, so I guess uh, they just didn't want to do it that way. Anyway, let's get Wheeljack out of here, and for now, let's disassemble this thing. So I'm going to pop this off. This can hinge up here. I mean, if you wanted to, you could kind of do that so that you get a little more height on the repair drone, but it actually unplugs from the back here. You got the pegs and ports and all that. And this will be put off to the side for the robot mode later. 
And then also back here, you just slide this out and this will become the shield. And this is going to be folded up and put away and we'll talk about it probably towards the end of all this nonsense. So there. You don't really notice if the drone is removed, so if you wanted to leave it off for whatever reason, you could do that, but you definitely notice when the uh, when that's gone. Oh, and I pegged his rifle down here just because, like, if I peg the rifle down underneath the trailer here, it's not as in the way or obvious. Unfortunately, because of the geometry involved, you can't really easily peg the, uh, the rifle under here because there's just not enough space. You can see it's hitting the wheels. You can peg it kind of sideways, but then you've got this kind of sticking out of the side there. So we'll put this off to the side. And the rifle is the typical Optimus Prime looking ion blaster. It's a little bit thicker in the barrel and smaller in the back here, but I think it works. It's got a little stock hanging down, which is kind of cool. That's not something that's super common with this. Some nice molding, and it does fold up and actually clicks into place to kind of lock to a point. I mean, you can, you know, you can unclip it, but I like that it kind of solidly locks in place. You can fold it up and peg it into the back of the cab, which does work, you know, gets it out of the way, kind of doesn't really hide it, but it's not, it's not super in the way in terms of visually messing with the, uh, the cab, but if you plug it in back there, then it doesn't really leave you much room for the trailer. You can kind of pivot around it a little bit, but it just, it's like right up against the end there. So that's why I have it pegged into the bottom of the trailer because it's out of the way. And so now that we have just the cab, let us do some size comparisons. So here we have Earthrise Optimus Prime, just the cab with a standard Transformers Deluxe and uh, this looks a little small, but it'll work better in robot mode. Here he is with Earthrise Wheeljack. Actually, let me bring these in a little bit closer. There we go. So there he is with Earthrise Wheeljack. Here he is with Siege Optimus Prime, and the, they're very, very similar in size. <laughs> Probably because Earthrise Prime is a retool, but a very, very extensive retool. And of course, here he is with the duct tank. Okay, and uh, well, now I have a cat on my lap. A very, very insistent and adorable, but insistent little cat. So um, I'm going to try to do the transformation around her, but uh, it might be a little tricky. We'll see how it goes. Just in case you all doubted me, this is my current situation. I am trapped under a cat. All right, let's do this. Okay, and there we have Earthrise Optimus Prime in his robot mode. And this is a G1E Optimus Prime, as they all are. And I still have a very insistent cat on me. Once again, it is the kind of typical Optimus Prime colors with the blue, red, grayish going on there. The proportions are a little weird on this guy, though. The torso section is a little bit too smushed in. The arms, like, he doesn't really have much in the way of a bicep. I think mostly that's just because this boxy thing comes down a little far, so it makes it look like his arms are really stumpy. It's a little bit, yeah. And also there's the whole uh, chest shelf thing sticking out kind of far, but it's not as bad in hand as I thought it would be. All that said, like, yes, he's a little bit awkward proportionally, but it's still really cool. And that transformation is really neat. I like how about half of the fake front of the truck just kind of folds up and accordions into his torso and just disappears. Yeah, the last little bit of it is hanging off of his back, but this also isn't as bad as I thought it would be. It's just not quite as intrusive as I expected. I wonder actually, how would it look to open these up, swing them around and just kind of have them as hip skirts? It's okay. It's not terrible. So there's that. Uh, if you wanted to 
this is kind of clipped on, so I think you could probably unclip it, but I don't want to test that theory right now. So we will leave it at that. And I have my lap back so I can be a little closer to the camera. Yay! And this Optimus Prime is also covered in detail, molded detail specifically. And you can see there's a lot on the inside of this bit here. And this is kind of the issue that I have with that, just the way the legs work, as opposed to the Siege figure. Uh, these kind of are obvious and stand out too much. And I don't like that it's gray plastic. And I kind of wish that there was a way for this to, you know, flip around and hide the wheels away a little bit better. I mean, they don't stick out super far, but it's mostly the inside of the leg here that's like, why did we do it this way? And here you can kind of see more what I'm talking about with the uh, forearms and biceps where it's just kind of... Like, I know it's because of the transformation, but I just feel like the arms look too stumpy. It's just how it is. And then you've got that Telltale Optimus midsection, which as I said, is a little bit smushed, but still works. I definitely want to add some detailing in here though myself, like maybe paint the side mirror silver, do some yellow for the lights up top there, that kind of thing. We'll see how it goes. Definitely could do with a little bit more paint, but he also comes with a big, big-ish trailer that has no paint, but you know, it's budget's got to be split in various ways. I'm not a, an economics person for Hasbro, but I'm sure that cost that would have gone into paint on the robot had to be kind of split among a lot of different things. Before I forget, since somebody cares, not me, but somebody, there we go. He does have a matrix chamber and he has a teeny tiny matrix. Yay. If you've never seen anything on this channel before or me talking about Optimus Primes before, I'm just not a fan of the matrix gimmick. I feel like it eats up budget for the toy that could be better spent elsewhere. It's like, yes, it's Optimus Prime, he has the Matrix, we get it. But it's fine, and, you know, this will appeal to other people. I will say they did paint it nicely. You've got the translucent blue, but then the kind of coppery color for that ball in the middle, and then the silver handles, so it's the proper Matrix colors. Even painted around the, uh, the top there, so they didn't cheap out and just do, like, a big blob of copper in the middle and then just kind of paint the very edges of the silver. I like that they detailed it well. But... This is where it's going to stay, because I don't care. Sorry. Also worth noting, that head. This is actually the Siege Optimus Prime head, because uh, Earthrise Prime's head... Let me bring them both... Okay, had to get a little creative with the arm placement, but <laughs> looking at the heads closer together, you can see that uh, Earthrise Prime's head, which is on Siege Prime, they didn't paint the silver around the eyes, so those eyes just kind of get lost and it makes the head feel a little bit cheap and unpainted. It also doesn't help that there's a uh, big old chip taken off of one of the ears there. So you can see the red plastic underneath. Don't know why they cast the head in red plastic. Whereas Siege Prime, it's, you know, one big old piece of blue with the silver in the right place and you can see the eyes better and it's just, it's better. Also, Earthrise did that weird thing where the back of the head, they painted this like metallic-y blue color, but the front of the head is not metallic-y blue, so that's it's really weird. I prefer the Siege head on the Earthrise figure because it looks better. <laughs> so, yeah, you can just swap them out. It is worth noting, it's hard to tell here, but the back of the head on Earthrise Prime is a little bit shorter than the back of the head on Siege Prime. It still fits, like you saw, it did still work in vehicle mode, but it's much more snug with the Siege head applied because the Earthrise head has just a little bit more clearance back here that allows it to tuck in and not kind of get in the way as much. Oh, also there's the metallic blue hands. Um, I don't know why they did this. I appreciate the fact that the hands can open and close, but I don't know why they made them metallic, because this is the only metallic blue on the entire figure. Okay, not the only blue. There's here, here, this little bit in his crotch, and then the typically the back of the head, but as I said, this is the Siege Prime head. So it's weird. It's like he's wearing spangly gloves. I don't know why they wanted to do that, but hey, that's what they did. Bringing in the gun, you can start back here or like this if you want uh, just to you know have it on him but not in his hand personally I'm gonna put it in his hand so 
Open that up, push that in, and mine. I don't know if this is just because I may have gotten a later run, but I know if some people had issues with this not really staying in place that well. Mine is totally fine. Like, I can bump it and it does not want to come out. I have to really intentionally pop it out for it to move like that. And this just goes in the hand like you expect. And there you go. Now he has his gun. There is also the shield, which can peg into any spot on him that has a port. So you could just do that if you wanted. Or you could leave it on the trailer, of course. You can plug it in here and have it like a little buckler. What I actually like to do is peg it up here like this. And we will get into why once we deal with this thing. Because this little goofy thing also has a little peg on it and that can peg into his back. I believe the uh, instructions recommend this where you can give him kind of this robo-familiar, <laughs> I guess. But what I've actually found that I can do with it that I think is really cool is you can peg it into his forearm and it can actually kind of fit into this gap on the shield there so it doesn't quite get in the way too much and you can kind of work around it. So it's it does kind of mess with the articulation a bit, but you know, you got options. And you can give him like this kind of extendo claw arm. Or if you want to get really cute, if you rotate this around, you can flip it around this way so it lines up a little bit better with his arm. And I actually think this is kind of cool. Doing that along with the uh, the shield up there, it kind of almost looks like he's got this big armored extra arm thing going on, like an exosuit or something. I don't know. I, I think it's cool. I really like that. And it is one of many options you can do with this guy. And bringing in this stupid thing, you can, you know, have it like he's in a little repair bay or something like that. You can plug this up there so it's kind of hanging over him and doing stuff. Another thing you can do, which uh, I forget who I saw it on Twitter, but there's actually a, uh, a peg here that can peg into the back there. And if you angle this back, and I actually like to angle these back a little bit as well, you can plug this in here and it'll actually stick to his back and you can give him like a little not quite wing pack. I can't decide if this looks completely ridiculous or kind of cool. I feel like it'd look kind of cool if it weren't sitting up so high there, but hey, it's a thing. I like things. So with all of that out of the way, let us get to those size comparisons. Here he is with a standard deluxe and he's definitely bigger. It was a little bit, I don't know, when uh, looking at the cab versus the car, but seeing them in robot mode, he definitely has the height that I think he should have for being a supposedly larger figure. And let's move these a little bit closer. Here he is with Earthrise Wheeljack. So uh, that's how that works out. I think that's fine. And here he is with Siege Optimus Prime, and it's hard to tell from this angle, but he is a little bit taller. You can also tell from this angle, how the torsos are out of whack there. Siege Prime's torso section is just much better proportioned. This guy is just like, eh. <laughs> just, yeah. Still a very cool figure. Still do not mind at all having him and Siege Prime, but uh, Siege Prime, if you ignore the junk hanging off of him and all the battle damage, he just has better proportions overall. And lastly, Prime Duck Tank. So that is going to do it for Earthrise Optimus Prime. I know I don't normally cover accessories at all, but I just really like this so much that I felt compelled to. I would have been fine if this guy didn't come with the trailer, but as I said, I can totally understand why other people would be excited about that. I'm just a little bit disappointed with the, uh, the torso proportions I can live with, but I am a little bit, nah, like I wish those were a little bit better. The stumpy arms, again, I think it's more of a perception thing. It's just little things, little proportional things. The big disappointments for me with this figure are the fact that the head is just weirdly done, which, once again, just as a reminder, this is the Siege Prime head because I swapped it because I like it better. But I'm just not a fan of the uh, lack of silver around the eyes there and the inexplicably metallic-y blue back of the head. I don't, I just don't get that. 
And unfortunately, it's not screwed together, it's glued together, so uh, splitting it apart to swap the headbacks would just be too, uh, too much of a pain in the butt, so I'm not going to be doing that. Which means he's going to be stuck with the siege head that doesn't quite fit as perfectly in truck mode, but it still works. And then there's the inexplicably metallic blue hands, I just don't get that. And then the leg stuff that I talked about and the gray on the inside there. I just... It's a lot of little things that I really wish they had done differently. That does not mean that I don't prefer this over Siege Prime. I mean, I think Siege Prime, Siege Prime is a very cool figure, and I'm still kind of wanting to get my hands on that 40th anniversary cell shaded one that I can't find anywhere. But I just have nitpicks, but I can't argue with how cool this figure is, even with those nitpicks. So that is going to do it. What do you all think of Earthrise Optimus Prime? I know there's lots of... Lots of opinions out there with regards to the fact that, you know, he's a leader-priced figure, and he is absolutely not a leader-sized figure. But he does come with a trailer and all this, you know, all the accessories. There's some really great engineering going on here. I more look at it as this is like a Masterpiece-inspired Optimus Prime figure for people who may not either have room for a Masterpiece Prime or have the budget for a Masterpiece Prime. And I think with that in mind, it works really well for that. Anyway, I have been rambling for long enough. So thank you everybody for watching. And remember, art is more than meets the eye.